Welcome everyone. We will get started with this webinar in just a few minutes. We'll start at the top of the hour. Thanks for joining us. It'll be just a few minutes. Okay, welcome everyone to the Autodesk Civil Engineering um, webinar series. We're excited today to have John Sayre, who's a technical marketing manager with Autodesk, is one of my colleagues, and Rafael Fernandez with Esri will be presenting on a couple different workflows and we'll be showing you some of this, the, this presentation we're calling Smart Design, Smarter Infrastructure. So as a reminder, this webcast series is now monthly. Generally, it's going to be the third Wednesday of the month, and you will see uh, some of these emails go out regarding that. Again, the goal of this webinar, the whole purpose of it, is to bring the users and the producers of the software together to discuss ways that, that we can all improve. And what we like from you is input on things that, that are going well or things that need to improve. And, and our, our task and our goal is to show you some of the latest features and some of these things that are going to optimize your workflows on your end. Uh, next month, as a reminder, and that'll be coming up in, on April 11th, we're going to be going over what's new in Civil 3D and InfoWorks for 2020, and that's the global launch. And so we're excited to have Nick Zeeban and Tim Yaris will be presenting for us there as well. So look in your emails. We can look on the Autodesk community site, um, as well as some of the other social feeds that demonstrate some of what when and where those uh, those webinars are going to come up. If you have any suggestions for future topics that you would really like to see, if you have any great ideas, uh, workflows that you'd like to see, whatever it may be, if you've got ideas and suggestions um, in your GoToWebinar panel, there is a questions field that you're welcome to enter in any of those. Um, if you've got some good ideas, we'd love to hear them. And as we move along through the presentation, you're also more than welcome to ask questions. And we'll, we'll post those to, to John and to Raphael so that they can, those, those experts on, in those fields can provide the, uh, the answers as we move along. Again, want to remind everybody and, and point you to the Autodesk, um, the civil community website as well. That's where these webinars will be posted once they're finalized. So you can look for those there. Again, a lot of different material that's, that shows up on that site as well. Good a good resource to, to go to right now. And um, once this is posted, if you know of anybody who was unable to attend the webinar live, the, the recording will be posted on that side as well. General disclaimer that anything that's shown as future is not a guarantee. So please don't make purchasing decisions based on anything that's considered future. Most of the stuff that is gonna be pres presented today um, should should be live, but there may be a few things that, that are considered future. But, but again, um, just as a general disclaimer, wanna, to put that out there as well. And again, want to remind everybody, please ask a lot of questions. If you, if, as we, as we move through the presentation, anything that you've got present uh, questions about, we have a handful of people who are on, um, ready to, to help 
answer and field some of those questions, any of those questions that we're not able to, to answer, we can either follow up with an email to you or uh, we can ask uh, John and Raphael directly. One other thing we want to point out right now is that uh, with um, any anybody who signs up for the AEC collection will also be able to access uh, a year subscription for Esri Arc GIS. And so this is a, a limited offer that, that's going on right now that's being made through Esri. So just want to point that out. The URL is there at the bottom of the screen. So um, please take note of that. And uh, if this is something that suits you and it's it's of interest to you, please uh, jump on this. It's a, a really good value of, of that's being offered right now. With that, we've got a handful of poll questions. We want to get a general idea of, of your background, your interest. And so we'll go ahead and, and, and launch those uh, questions right now. So as you see the uh, the polls come up, if you can just provide a yes or no answer on, on those and we'll let that run for about another 15 or 20 seconds. Great, it looks like the majority of everybody has, has used the Esri ArcGIS, so, okay. We'll go to the, um, and some of those results there, um, we can see that, thank you for everybody who, who voted there. So we'll go to the next question now, and I uh, wanna see everybody's familiar, familiarity and, and usage of, of InfoWorks as well. So we'll provide you another 15 or 20 seconds to, to vote on that as well. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that out. So that's kind of some of the stuff that I've seen is that a lot of people, it seems like InfoWorks is a little bit of an underutilized tool there. So we'll go ahead and launch the, uh, the third poll question now. And just wanna get into your, your area of focus, whether if it's uh, land development, roadway, geotech, what your interests are, what your primary focus is in your industry and we'll let that run for another 10 seconds or so. Okay, great. Thanks to everybody who voted there. So it looks like majority of our users here are, you're in the right place in the land development area. That's that's gonna be a strong area and element for the, the ArcGIS. So with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation over now to, uh, to John and all right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let Raphael go ahead and get started here. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just show my screen for a second here, and then I will switch it to Raphael. All right, not to confuse the issue there, Raphael, you can go ahead and show your screen, and Thanks, uh, take it away. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So I was really encouraged to see how many of you have already used ArcGIS Online and are using the ArcGIS platform. Um, it seemed like around 60% of you um, were actually using that. So I just want to give you a little bit of an update to ArcGIS Online. And for those of you who don't necessarily know what ArcGIS Online is, I just wanted to give you sort of some context of what this environment is and what it can do for you. So about a few, maybe 10 years ago, Esri worked on this process of creating a web GIS enabling us to unlock data from the, the desktop application and publish it into an environment where content could be shared throughout the organization. That content, that GIS data is shared through web maps and applications. And there can be APIs that can, can create your own applications using our own scripting languages. So this encapsulated web GIS is set up for a specific organization. And now Autodesk InfraWorks can actually connect to this environment and begin to bring down information and leverage it within um, InfraWorks. Now, for some context, since the launch of ArcGIS Online, we have over 6.7 million users using this environment today. Those users are creating over 3.2 billion, or 32 billion maps in just 2018 alone. There's 22 th million items that have been um, added to those environments and we see over 59 million open data downloads. And open data is really a place where you can find more content and bring it in and use it within your GIS and your projects. So we'll, 
we'll talk a little bit more about open data and where you can find information using that. But so this is just a high level overview of what ArcGIS Online brings to you. What it really does is what I said earlier, it connects people within your organization with to data and information to let them get a real time view of what's going on out in the field um, and back in the office as well. You can connect these organizations together so you could connect your internal organization with a customer's organization. Begin to share information back and forth to help provide decisions um, and help with decision making process. You have applications, content, the ability to do analytics within this ArcGIS Online organization, and it's all administered by you and the data is owned by you. And so you have the ability to set up these environments and manage how people should access them. We've seen a couple common patterns of how ArcGIS Online is actually utilized and some of the trends that we see that most of our customer base is actually leveraging it for. So just general mapping and visualization, which is really powerful for InfraWorks users to be able to grab that information that they know is authoritative from the GIS and bring it into InfraWorks to make decisions about designs. The ability to do some analysis to then understand what's going on in and around your design area so that you can better design something. And then finally, that ability to share all that data that you're managing to constituents and people throughout um, the ArcGIS Online environment. So let me just go through and show you um, what ArcGIS Online is. So here, I'm in, I went to ArcGIS.com and I can just sign in to my organization. And I'm gonna sign in to a shared environment that we have with John from Autodesk. Oh, security is important, so you gotta remember your password. Shoot. Well, I signed in previously just in case that happened. Sorry about that. So this is what that environment looks like when you log in. I can see the banner and I've logged in with my named user and my credentials. Here, if I go to my profile, I can see some information about myself. I can see the picture and so I know who I am. I can see that I'm my bio of what are my interests and what I'm doing in the organization and how somebody can contact me. I can also see the specific applications that I have access to in my ArcGIS Online organization. We're not gonna go through all these different applications and how they work and what they can do, but one that we will highlight is Collector for ArcGIS, this one down here. We're gonna show you some interesting use cases around Collector and using that in InfraWorks today. So here, I have access to my organization and my content. And I can add more content to my organization right here in this content tab. If I search for an item, I can add an item from my computer. And this could be a shapefile or a CSV. I could search for content from the web and then just begin to pull that into my environment so that we can begin to use that. Now we hear from a lot of users that the most of your time is spent looking for valid information for your project designs. So one of the places that I wanna share with you to look for information is this living atlas of the world. So Esri works with many local, state, and federal agencies, county agencies, to share their data through ArcGIS Online and give our user base access to that data freely. So you can come here and begin to browse this website to then see what kind of data is available. One of the pieces of data that I think is really important are these active hurricanes. So this is a live feed of all the hurricane the wildfire activity, and the weather warnings going on for the US right now. We also have Sentinel views, which are um, live imagery updates, and they're coming through and updating at all times. But something that we find that is pretty impactful for services firms is this National Bridge Survey. And here, we actually have worked with the Department of Transportation to publish the entire bridge survey for the entire US here in ArcGIS Online. So now you can bring this data into your maps and begin to understand what the conditions of these bridges look like. This is just an example of one data set that's available to you in the Living Atlas that you can begin to use. Another place where you can find some content is through open data sites. And so I mentioned that there's 59 million downloads of open data sites today. Here's the state of Maryland's open data site and what they've put together. And you can see all the different sort of um, types of data that they've, 
they've brought into here. So transportation might be a place where you can look for content that would help you understand bridges and roads um, and different assets around those roads. You can also come down and see all the different county governments that have shared their data with the state so that they can publish that out publicly for users to use. Now, the last place I wanna highlight for you is a city. So here in the city of Fayetteville, if I scroll down to their city departments, there's actually a link to their GIS department and the data there. I can come in here and start to identify any of the data in this environment and download that locally into my, on my computer and publish that into ArcGIS Online or directly link to it and then begin to use the data from this environment to help me make decisions about my designs. So let's go back to that ArcGIS Online organization. And here I can see I have some content in here. I have a map called Fayetteville John that John's gonna use a little later and a hydrant inspection map that John will also use later. But I wanna create an environment or a group where John can access this information and begin to use it within InfraWorks. So here if I go to groups, I can create a new group and I've previously done that and named it Fayetteville. I've gone in and actually shared some of that data and content with John right here. If I look at the members, I can see who has access to this environment. If I have new members that I wanna invite, I can just invite them from here. So I can see that John's already a part of this group. And so he'll be able to access this information. Now, let's go through the process of actually adding some, some of this content into a web map that John can then use in InfraWorks. So here, I'm gonna open up this Fayetteville John map. And we can see some information in here. Just remove the ORT stops. And then the points of interest and the zoning. So here, what I have is a base map with some imagery and our buildings. I can come in here and begin to change the base maps if I wanted to. So like a topographic map to better understand what's going on for the roads and make those roads pop out a little bit more. I can also add data and search for content from the Living Atlas. So here, if I search for the Living Atlas, again, I can search for that bridge layer. And I can find that same National Bridge Survey and bring that in here. We're not gonna use that today, but I just wanted to show you how you could bring that in. I can also search my organization for other layers. And if I search for Fayetteville, I can begin to see all of the layers that have been tagged with this Fayetteville um, name. And here, I can see that there's actually a one foot aerial imagery layer that has been shared with me by Wes Newman. And it's got one foot accuracy that the state has published. So I can bring that into my map right here and begin to visualize what that looks like. I can also go through and add zoning layers from the city. And so we can see what that zoning looks like. And since the city published points of interest, I can see where the points of interest are in and around um, University of Arkansas. Now, another thing that I've added or I've downloaded from the local government site was actually our ORT stops. These are bus stops in and around the Fayetteville area. And I got it as a CSV file. Here, I can just drag and drop and it's mapped that CSV file onto my map here. And here, I wanna just change the style slightly so that we can see it a little bit better. We're gonna turn these symbols into, let's say, green stars. I'll make those 20 points. And now I can see the location of all of those mapped um, bus stops. Let's zoom into that area that we were in previously before. Right here, south of um, Arkansas, University of Arkansas. Now, one of the things that we're looking for is a new development site in and around this area. And one of the things that I wanna do is actually understand what are drive, drive times or walk times from each one of these bus stops to understand where would be a good place to begin to build a new site. And so here I can use our analysis tools in ArcGIS Online, use the use proximity tool and create drive times. Now, this create drive times tool is pretty powerful because we can begin to identify how we should measure this. So I could do a walk time, identify 10 minutes walk, and then the type of um, polygon that we would want to be returned. But 
another thing that I'm interested in understanding is who are the people and what are the demographics of the people that live around this area? And so if I go back to my analysis tab, I can use this data enrichment layer. And in this data enrichment layer, I'll select my ORT stops and I'll select how I want to enrich this. And I want to do that walk time and make it a 10 minute walk time. I want it to return those polygons as boundaries. And here I want to actually go through and select specific variables to add to my data. And I can come through here and there are thousands of variables that are available to you as users to begin to add into your map. And here I'm going to just use total population um, and we can see all the different variables that we have just in this data set on population based off of census data. And I could also add our medium household income and then press apply. Now I'm going to run this analysis and what it's going to do is it's actually going to run a walk time based off of that road network and based off the sidewalks in and around that area. Then it's going to then go out and fetch all that data and append it back to that polygon so that we can begin to understand who are the people living in and around this area. And while that's processing, it should just take a second longer. And there it is. So now we have a 10 minute walk time from each one of these sites. And I can't really see where the overlap is very well on this map. And so I'm just gonna change the symbol really quickly to make it transparent in the middle and give it a red outline with um, a four point weight on there. So now when I click on one of these polygons, I can see all the data that I have and I can see the total population and the median household income. I can see that through all three of them. And I can see that this parcel right here, this empty parcel actually has overlap between all three of the different polygons we have. And so now I can save this map and then I'm gonna kick it back over to John and he's gonna show you how you can now access this content within InfraWorks and begin to use it. So John, back to you. All right. I'll go ahead and switch the presenter to me. All right. And I'll show my screen. So um, I want to start off by kind of telling a little bit of a story um, of the project and why we would actually do this inside of, or why you would actually do this inside of your company. Um, number one, I'm going to go ahead and hit model builder here real quick. Number one, uh, here's, here's the story. Um, I have a customer, I'm a civil engineer, and I have a customer that's come in, and they're trying to find a piece of property um, to build a commercial site, all right? They're going to throw some buildings, some parking, things of that nature out there, and they want it to be, um, they want it to be very attractable by folks that take the bus routes, that folks that just walk, ride bicycles, whatever. They want that to be kind of a main attraction. If you look around the country today, that's that's really becoming a theme. Uh, we want to be able to get back and forth um, and and commute back and forth uh, by foot or by train or by bus um, and leave our cars at home. So I want to be able to see that foot traffic. I want to be able to see where the bus stops are. And that's going to help me make the decision on where I buy my piece of property. All right. And once I buy my piece of property, I then want to do a, a short preliminary design just to take a look at what I can put on the property and then we'll take it through round trip and show some uh, parking spaces, some some parking layouts, uh, some building layouts, so on and so forth. So inside of my company, I have a person like Rafael that has curated this data for me, all right? So he's gone out, he's done the analysis that you, you just showed and um, now I can I can, access that data readily here in InfraWorks. When we start off in InfraWorks, we always start off by generating a model in Model Builder, all right? And we can find pretty much any location in the world um, here in Model Builder. So I can search by address, I could search by national monument, I could search by national park, uh, by uh, street address, so on and so forth. Today I'm going to search by Fayetteville, all right? So you notice I start typing that in, it auto populates and I can select Fayetteville, Arkansas. I would simply then 
just draw a rectangle for my AOI, all right? And what it's going to do is it's going to use this, or it's gonna go out and fetch this base data and generate a model for me so that I can start to apply this rich GIS data that Raphael's curated for me. So where does this data come in, the base data? The base data comes in from for the roads from open street maps. Uh, the buildings come in from open street maps. The imagery comes in from Bing. So we all know um, the Bing imagery is good, but we're gonna be able to show you how to bring in uh, that image that Raphael talked about, uh, the, the Arkansas, the state Arkansas one foot image uh, that he had. We're gonna bring that in too using ArcGIS online. And we've got elevation data or DEM data from USGS. So this is where our base will be built. This is how our base will be built. And it will return us a model that we could just select to get into and start to curate things or start to bring things in and uh, work with it. So I would give it a model name. I could call it uh, Fayetteville. Um, and I would hit create model and it would go out and fetch my model for me. You would get an email that says that your model is ready. All right, I'm gonna close this. I've already got this built, all right? So here is the model that it's actually uh, generated for me. And if you see here, sometimes if there's, if uh, OpenStreetMaps doesn't have buildings, there will be no buildings that come in and show up, but we do have the Bing map and we do have a surface, all right? So you can see there is relief around the area. If I turn it on its side, you can see it's a little bit mountainous here in Fayetteville. Um, so this is this is a great a great starting point, all right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna connect to ArcGIS Online and I wanna start to bring in and enrich my model from ArcGIS Online. So um, I would go up here in my data sources and select add ArcGIS data, all right? And what it does is it zooms out to the model limits. So everything you see in this rectangle is what is in my model. That's the limits of my model. So if I select my groups, remember, Raphael built me a web map and it's called Fayetteville John. So he has generated everything that I need right now for, for the type of um, presentation I'm looking for or, or the information I'm looking for so I can start to make decisions. So if I select that web map, I can see here I've got my points of interest, just like what he showed in ArcGIS Online. I've got my zoning, I've got my uh, ORT stops, and I've got my buildings, all right? Now, for right now, I'm just gonna select my buildings, all right? And I would give it what type of feature in InfraWorks it needs to map that to. So I'm gonna map that to buildings, all right? And then for right now, like I said, I'm gonna scroll down and just select this imagery, all right? So now we can bring in imagery from ArcGIS Online. So I could select that image and I could say I wanted it to come in as ground imagery. Now I could also, we've also got this Arkansas DEM one meter that was uh, generated in 2018. I could also add that and bring that DEM information in too through this import process. So I would just select that image and then I would see the image and the buildings also in my preview. Now, once I have that picked to, to, to what I wanna see or what I wanna bring in, I just go down here and hit add to my design project. Now I've already got this brought in all right, so I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna jump to another proposal here that already represents that import. Now, I don't want you to think I'm not gonna actually import some data from ArcGIS today. I am, I'm all about live demonstration. Um, so we will be importing uh, the enriched data here in just one second. So if you look, now I can see all of my buildings. I can see um, the image that's underneath it. All right, that is the image that came in and Raphael showed us in ArcGIS Online. And you can tell it's actually, it's a different color, all right? So we could go back and we could bring the other image forward if we wanted to. Um, you would just do that in your surface layers. But I think that this image shows a lot better. We all know that uh, real world, what's there today imagery is key in trying to figure out what we're going to design, where we're gonna design it, so on and so forth. So the better the image, the better, the better information we have. So now that I've got my imagery, my buildings in, I'm ready to bring in the enriched data, right? So I'm going to switch to this Web3 proposal real quick. And I'm going to go back out to ArcGIS Online. And I'm gonna select 
that same Fayetteville John uh, web map. It's thinking here. There we go. So I pick Fayetteville John. And notice that I have that enriched ORT stops Fayetteville information. So I'm going to select that. And you can see that I've got my, my polygons. All right. So I'm going to bring that in as a coverage. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and select add to my design project. So it is going out now and fetching that information from ArcGIS Online. And it's bringing it in and it populates here in my model. So see, that was very quick for it to bring that information in. Now, we can stylize this information. I can't really see anything underneath here right now. So it's a little bit difficult to pick what piece of property I'd like to look at and buy. So I can go back and I can tell it, I wanna give it a different style, all right? So that style, I wanna kind of match what Raphael had. So I can just change the style and then you'll see the red outlines like what we had in ArcGIS Online. One thing I wanna point out, if you select any of these polygons, like I select that polygon right there, notice that all of the attribute information that was in ArcGIS Online is shown right here and readily available. So I could scroll, remember we did the enrichment. So we had the mean, uh, the mean household income for that, for that polygon is right here, all right? 22,701. If you scroll on down, you can see that the total population in that particular area is 1,226 folks, all right? Um, so we could select one of the different polygons and that, that, or that information is all going to update. My point to showing you this is that all of the information that was inside of ArcGIS Online on that data is now inside of InfraWorks and we have a live connection to it. So if, if we need to, if any of that updates, then we can simply refresh our data source and that information will repopulate here. All right, so now we've got our, our data inside of InfraWorks and we can see that we have a, a really good crossing here at this piece of property, okay? So we can select, we can say, you know what, we'd like to see what we can put on this piece of property. So I'm gonna to switch to a different proposal here that shows maybe a napkin sketch. So how many times have you heard that, that terminology? I, you know, we've got a napkin sketch and I've even worked, when I worked in production, I've actually had napkins brought to me um, of, of sketches that, you know, a civil engineer and one of our clients had actually sat in a lunch meeting and drew on, okay? Uh, not the most, uh, you know, favorable way to start a project, but I guarantee you there's a lot of projects that start that way. So we can translate that name, napkin sketch into uh, a conceptual type design here on top of this property. So I can see the outline. I've given it just an area here, a coverage with a, with a color. I've thrown some buildings on so we can see kind of how many buildings we might get on this site. And then obviously there's gonna be parking in here, but what I wanna really be concerned with is, can I service this with utilities? Okay, can I, uh, what, kind of, what kind of utilities do I have around? Well, if I change my conceptual view to engineering view, I can then see all of the GIS information that is underneath the ground. So you, you can see my water lines. If I pan here to the north, I can see my sanitary sewer lines. So the great thing about it for this particular piece of property we were able to identify that piece of property because of the data enrichment um, and the overlap of the polygons. This is a prime, prime uh, piece of property for us to be accessed by three different bus stops. Okay, so it overlaps with a 10 minute walk, number one. Number two, we've looked at the contour elevations. So this is not like at the knob of a hill or something like that. It looks like uh, the surface is, is pretty favorable. And we can also see the utilities, so we can we have water service that runs right by our property, and we have sanitary sewer service. We even have a fire hydrant that's right here on our property. Now, uh, maybe maybe we want to feel verify a few things. Raphael, does that make sense to you to maybe feel verify um, the GIS data? Yeah, so one of the things that we've heard a lot um, is that organizations sometimes want to trust their GIS data, but they want to then verify that the data that they have is actually representative of what's happening out in the real world. So although you're connecting to a city and a local municipality's data and bringing it in, 
you might not actually be a hundred percent sure that the data that's on the data that you have is 100 percent representative so there's this tool in the arcgis platform called collector for arcgis that allows you to take web maps and data out into the field to then to begin to do inspections and understand what's going on. So here, John's on his mobile device, and he's actually out in the field here on that street corner, and he can see that hydrant. And John, is that hydrant actually right there across the street from you, or is it somewhere else? You know what? After further um, looking out here in the field, I, I've noticed that that fire hydrant is not here. It's actually on this side of the road, okay? So it's 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 it actually needs to be moved. It's not in the correct location. So why don't we go ahead and just since we're standing here looking at the hydrant in the field, why don't we move that hydrant to the correct location? So in order to do that here in the collector app, I would simply select that that hydrant and then I'll pick the hydrant itself for me to move and I will select edit. All right. So I'm going to edit the position of that hydrant. So I would move it over to the opposite side of the road where it actually resides. I would select update point. Now, I've selected update point, but there's a lot of different information that we can add to this right here in the field right now. So I wanna change this field note, all right? I'm gonna pick in here where it says that, and I'm gonna backspace that out, and I'm gonna use the voice to text uh, function in my phone to add a note. So I'll hit the voice to text, this hydrant, is in the correct location now. I'll hit next and I want to show that uh, that it's been updated today and I would simply hit submit. Now once I hit submit, how long do you think it'll take before we can update this in InfoWorks? Well, I can see that it's updated in my collector app. Now if I zoom in here in InfoWorks, I simply select my feature source and hit refresh it goes out and connects back to ArcGIS Online and fetches the new location of that particular hydrant. All right, so it does take it just a second here and it will update the location of that hydrant. So all the years in, in doing field work and things of that nature, if I'd have had this app, boy, I'd have been a happy, happy camper. <laughs> I could have moved things right on the fly, you know? So there, you can see that the new, the new location of the hydrant is shown, the actual location. But while we were out, we noticed that down here in about the middle of this line, uh, there was another fire hydrant that was not collected. So whenever the data was actually picked up in the field and then inputted into the GIS system, they may have added a fire hydrant after that or something uh, to that effect, or it could have physically gotten mis uh, you know, not, not picked up. And that's never happened, right? Everything always gets exactly uh, picked up the way it should. But to to no avail, we can add that right back, all right? So I see in the field, I'm standing there in front of a hydrant, I can add another hydrant. So I just hit my plus sign here and I can add that new feature, all right? So I'm gonna add that hydrant. I'm gonna move down to where that location is and I'm gonna put that right here on the edge of that water line because that's where I have inspected it and saw it in the field. So I hit the, I hit it to set the point. I actually want to give it some, some information. I want to tell it it's got a six inch barrel size. Uh, maybe the color of it is blue. All right. And I want to give it a field note. So I'll use my, my speech to text uh, uh, function here again. This is a fire hydrant that was missed. All right, and then again, the date that it was collected. So I hit submit, and it's gonna add that in on my screen here. So if I scroll back down here and I look, I can see that it's added that hydrant right there, all right? Now, again, here in InfraWorks, I simply select my data source and I select refresh, and it goes out again and it fetches that particular data. All right, so it's gonna bring that in. It's gonna show me my new hydrant location, the one that was missed here on my screen. And there it is. So the, so the real value of this application and what John just showed too is not that it's only in InfraWorks, 
but this data is connected through all the applications and tools that are connected to that GIS data, right? So it could be InfraWorks, it could be a focus application, ArcGIS, but now your entire organization is working off of the real-time data, and it's based off of just one map that's created in ArcGIS Online and then exposed to different audiences based off of what they need to see. And I think from with that, John, I think we can go into detail design and probably finalize a sketch, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We know we can see, I'm gonna minimize this here. We can see in our engineering view that we have water and, water and sewer connection. Now, what we can do then is we could actually take this from InfraWorks directly into Civil 3D, and we could start to do some parking lot design. We could lay out parking stalls. We could lay out uh, parking aisles. Uh, with vehicle tracking. We could also bring in some Revit models, all right? And we can start to visualize how this would actually be designed. So if I go back to my conceptual view, you can see it a little bit better there. Um, we're still using the up-to-date raster imagery. We've now brought in our Revit files, all right? So it just gives you a nice contextual model, all right? That That is, well, it's it's a lot more pleasing to the eye than just a, a square, is to be able to bring that physical Revit model in. We can bring uh, shape uh, SketchUp files in also if we'd like to represent our buildings with SketchUp. Uh, but the point is, is that we can, we can round trip that through Civil 3D, through Revit to bring the buildings in, and then populate InfraWorks so that we can create a very nice visualization of this property, all right? Now, why would we want a visualization? Well, we always are trying to convey a message to all stakeholders of this project, whether they be for this project or if they're against this project. And what I mean by that, if we go to a planning and zoning meeting and or a city council meeting, you're never going to go and everybody be happy about you building a project. All right. There, there could be some opposition. Well, if you have a 2D plan sheet that you're trying to convey a message on, it's a little bit hard to understand what's really going on on that 2D plan sheet. If you look at a 3D contextual model of everything that's going to be built on that site, it is just like you're standing on site whenever it's built. So it makes complete sense to the layperson. So uh, if I did have uh, some pushback from folks that are living in and around, maybe in these buildings here, maybe these are apartments, they're, they're saying, hey, we don't want you to build this back here because it could be an eyesore. Well, you're, you're showing them here how it's going to look once it's built. Now, what you could do to help with that here in InfraWorks, I'm going to close this data source panel, is you could create what's called a storyboard, all right? And very quickly, um, a, a video, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? You, everybody's heard that saying. Well, a video, I don't know how many words that's worth. A video shows a lot um, presentation wise. And so it would be nice to be able to quickly generate something like that. So if I go up to my storyboard creator, all right, and I'm going to create a new, actually, I'm going to add a new storyboard real quick. And then I'm going to start by adding a camera path. All right, so it, it's gonna start here with my video. I'm gonna let it zoom back, take another shot, and I'll pan around. All right, we'll just give them like an overview of what this is going to look like. All right, I'm just adding in different views into this storyboard. Now, once I hit those views, I could go over here on the right and I can control the speed, I can control uh, the keyframe itself. Um, you can time it if you'd like instead of setting a speed, so on and so forth. So you simply just zoom around and keep adding it until you've got what you want. And I'll hit that for my last keyframe. Then we would play it just to see what it looks like. It might be a little fast. All right. We could slow it down. We can add keyframes midstream. This, if you play this for folks, this definitely shows a lot better presentation-wise than a 2D plan of profile or a 2D plan that's been watercolored up, all right? I say watercolored up. I've actually had to do that before. So once you've got your storyboard the way you like, you can simply hit this button right here because maybe we don't want to have to run InfraWorks live in front of folks. Well, then we can just record out 
this storyboard and you could take and put this video that it creates onto an iPad or some kind of mobile device, even your phone. And I've seen people have many projectors that are Bluetooth that they can actually shoot this right up on a screen there in a planning and zoning meeting. I've um, I actually went to a planning and zoning meeting here in my town a couple weeks ago and you know they they've got a screen that will come down and they are more than willing to pull that screen down right in the middle of the meeting and let you start to present things that will help with the project and um, I think that you can see that uh, this type of presentation would definitely be palatable. All right. So, Ralph, do you have anything else? No, I think I'm good. I think uh, there's a bunch of questions out there, and so maybe we can hit some of those. Or All if right. there's something else that Ben has to cover. Nope. Sorry, guys, I'm fielding questions now. That's all right. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to you, Ben. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a number of questions, and I would, um, what I will say up front is I do apologize to any of those. Can you guys see my screen? Am I showing the correct screen? I'm seeing the Esri subscription. Good. Screen. Okay. So we had a question. A uh, few people asked to see that screen again. They wanted to see the uh, the Esri subscription uh, page as well. So we're showing that that again. So. Um, John, I'll, I'll go through some of these questions. Had a lot of really good questions, a lot of very in-depth questions, but um, we'll go over some of these and uh, kind of touch on these, and I'll let you guys uh, demonstrate. And, and if you want to take over presentation again, then we'll certainly we'll certainly uh, turn it back over to you. But um, some of the questions were: adding members can can group members be added by security groups, or do they have to be added individually? Maybe Raphael, maybe you know on that one as far as adding individuals to the so adding individuals to um, ArcGIS Online, you can connect that to your Active Directory, and then you could add people in that way. And then you choose which groups people can then access to, get access okay. to through ArcGIS Online. Okay. A couple of questions internationally. Um, as far as source of the data and if we've got users that are, for say, in South Africa, they want to yep. get access to data. Is it just in the U.S. and Europe, or what? What kind of access do they have? And then, what is the source of that data? So, a couple questions that we're we're briefing, uh, touching on, on that. Hey, yeah, ben, so, before we get in, sorry, uh, before we get into more questions, do you mind if we have one last polling question? We do have one last cold poll question. So, so hold hold tight on the questions just for a second. Um, we have one more final poll question that we want to uh, to get some input for those of you who who are with us. And, and again, thank you to everybody who, who is participating. We're, we're going to spend the rest, probably the rest of the time going over your questions. So, so stick around. So I um, want to see if, if those of you are, are interested in finding out some more information. We'll let that run for another 10 seconds. Let you guys uh, chime in there. So. We'll let that run for another five seconds or so. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate that. So we'll we'll go back to this. Um, so let's let's get into some of these questions. So they're going to be coming in fast and furious. I want to thank those who are helping to field some of the questions as we go along. Um, but uh, let's let's get into this. So um, a handful of questions regarding save back and being able to actually edit ArcGIS data with InfraWorks or or editing ArcGIS data in in general. Um, permissions to to do that and, and the process or procedure for being being able to upload data to ArcGIS. John or, or Raphael, if either of you guys want to touch on that briefly. Yeah, so I can cover that, but I want to cover that um, content question that you had earlier too, John. Oh yeah, um, sorry about that. Go ahead. No, you're good. So we work not only with the U.S. government or agencies, we also work with other um, federal organizations and countries to actually share their data. And so it's really dependent on the user community and the level of collaboration that we have with those organizations and their level of comfort of sharing information. So the best way to find that data and that information is really to go search for it. I would recommend looking at the Living Atlas and then again trying to go find some open data sites in and around South Africa or Australia or um, Africa in general or Asia to try and see where you can find some of that GIS content. I'm not saying that it won't be in ArcGIS Online, I'm just saying that it might be limited. <laughs> And so just look around for it. 
And then when it comes to editing and save back permissions, it's really going to be dependent on your user type in ArcGIS Online. So within ArcGIS Online, I didn't talk about this specifically, but we have this notion of identity and user types and roles. And so somebody to access content and bring it into InfraWorks needs to be a viewer. They need to be able to just to visualize information and be able to see that. But if you wanna actually edit that data, you need to be an editor in your organization. And so that's that same thing in InfraWorks. The user who would need to save back any data or any changes to the underlying data would have to be an editor role in their ArcGIS Online organization. And then they would be able to update that information and it could um, push back or save back. Okay, great, thanks. A um, handful of questions about the uh, the connector. Um, first of all, that is that, um, so one of the questions here um, was uh, being able to read duplicate object IDs with the connectors. Um, somebody was was mentioning that they were having uh, failure issues when it when they were trying to open up and they, they were showing duplicate object IDs with the connector. I'm not, uh, it's, I think we'd have to look into that one a little bit more deeply. John, do you yes. have any ideas? No, I, I'd have to see it. Okay. To understand yeah, understand. It completely. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm seeing this and, and again, I apologize because my, my uh, forte or my, uh, my discipline is, is not in the land development side. It's more on the transportation side, but I'm seeing this acronym quite a bit, the AGOL. Do, do either of you know what that is? The, the ArcGIS Online. Arch yeah. Arch yeah. Arch so I'm, I'm just yeah. not, not familiar with seeing that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's the number of questions about that ArcGIS Online as far as uh, saving the information back. Um, stay tuned for you, next month. Those, those of you who have that question, that's, that's a demonstration that will be shown in InfoWorks as far as a save back feature that's being in, incorporated into that. Again, no future future uh, just um, any kind of uh, sorry I'm, getting, I'm being distracted by by questions here um, that, that's a future so you know no purchasing decisions based on that but uh, that that is something that will be coming up in, in some of these others another question um, thought I was was very interesting was regarding the mobile devices um, they asked if infoworks was available on mobile devices and and John I believe it's not but there are there are files or data that can be utilized with some of the apps for from mobile devices. Is that correct? And can you speak to that just a little bit? Uh, when you say data that can be used with mobile devices, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So InfraWorks or ArcGIS data that because they, they had the question: Is, is InfraWorks available on mobile devices? Um, no, it's not. And I mean, we would if we were going to. Well, even on a mobile device, we could access and uh, look at it with uh, the large or the Autodesk viewer in BIM 360. Um, you could you could look at your model with your mobile device. Um, as far as data itself from InfraWorks, um, I don't know other than what I just said uh, how you could look at it. Okay, got it. Okay, um, a couple of questions about, and, and a lot of these were, were re really good questions about, about InfraWorks. Um, one of them was in regards to the coordinate system, and I don't know if you want to uh, share your screen, John. One of the questions was in regards to if you've got a data set that's in a specific state plane coordinate system, something along those lines, how do you set up your InfraWorks model to display the correct coordinate system because the default, you know, and the user was very familiar with the, the, the fact that the default is the lat long 84. So do you want to just show that briefly? It's a, it's better to, to yeah. show it than to explain it. I was trying to explain it and wasn't doing a yeah. very good job. So, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. So if we go here under our settings, all right, our little tools here at the top and we select our model, uh, model properties, this is where you can see where the coordinate system is set. So everything in InfraWorks is going to come in in LL84, okay? If you want to see coordinates change, like these coordinates down here, you want to see those change, um, you can go here and you can change to that state plane coordinate system. Now, this state plane coordinate system here is actually Arkansas state plane. So I could scroll down here to, let me get to it, Arkansas. And I think it's Arkansas State Plain North uh, foot. All right, so I could select the that that setting right there. All right, and I could hit apply and OK, and then I can see my state plane coordinates here and my Z elevation changes also to that uh, 
that vertical elevation that it should and how you're used to seeing it in state plane. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> now, well, here's, here's something to think about. If you're round tripping things through Civil 3D and you have your data in Civil 3D set to state plane, so Arkansas state plane uh, north foot, um, if this is not set that way, like what we just set it here in InfraWorks, it's not going to be a problem. You're still going to be able to go here in um, in InfraWorks, and if you wanted to attach, say, that Civil 3D drawing, all right, if I pick that right there, I can go out and I can pick my Civil 3D drawing. And because even if it's in and in set to state plane, and <laughs> our InfraWorks model not, might still be set to LL84, that that drawing will come in and sit in the right location. So he um so so that's not quite the question he was asking. I, I guess he's asking about the data that's coming in. How does he know what coordinate system that data is is going to be in? Um, he says um, it's how do how do I know that the in, that that when I output from Infoworks that the data is actually going to be in state plane? So I guess well, it's it's more that the ArcGIS data rather than the Infoworks model. You would I mean just to be oh wait a minute you. Uh, it's ArcGIS data, not the. Yeah, he, he wants to know how um, how does he know what coordinate system the data that that is coming in. So so ArcGIS Online works with WGS84, um, the lat long 84 that it normally uses. But if you're right. using our desktop application ArcGIS Pro, you actually have the option to choose and create your own custom projections. And so from there, you can actually share content from ArcGIS Pro, our desktop application, to ArcGIS Online in the specific projection you need. And if you do your governance and your data, um, follow your data policies correctly and set this up beforehand and always make sure that your data is set up to flow that way. And when you're building your projects that you start in ArcGIS Pro, you set up your projections, you set up your data, and you push it to ArcGIS Online. Then when you bring it into InfraWorks, it will be in the correct projection. Is that correct, John? Yes, yes. Okay. It is. And um, and again right. on the civil three D side, I mean if you if it's set up in state plane coordinates, um and you want to export points to an, a CSV and then bring them in and show them in InfraWorks, um you know, you can be if if it makes you feel better, you can set uh the coordinate system up like I just did and it will show here in the bottom. You'll be able to see the X, Y, and Z. Um but you would be able to bring that in and it would come in in the right location. Okay. A um, handful of questions were in regards, and, and again, everybody listening, everybody online, um, thank you for those of you who submit questions who we're not able to get to. Um, we're going to overwhelm John and Raphael with the questions that you have. All, all these questions are recorded, and so um, we can we can follow up with you guys uh, individually if we're not able to to address the questions uh, in in this at this time, and we do just have a few minutes remaining. One of the questions, and a couple questions actually, regarding Revit data and Revit models, bringing those in in a georeference location and or um, exporting that, that information to ArcGIS Online um, as far as utilizing state coordinate system. John, can you talk a little bit about importing a, a, a Revit model into, into InfoWorks and as far as making it georeferenced? Sure, absolutely. There's there's a great workflow on how to do that, and you use the the way to start that is in Civil 3D. So um, I actually just did a class on this last week. We can start in Civil 3D, and we can set that coordinate system, that state plane coordinate system, and use a command called the shared reference uh, point. All right, that that builds an XML file of the location in state plane of that particular building or any building. We can even do it on bridges. Okay. Now, once you've got that file and it's exported out of Civil 3D, you can open Revit and you can set that as a location inside of Revit. And it will physically rotate the building on your screen and set it to a, that state plane coordinate. Now, once that's done, you can save the model. All right. And then you can drag and drop that model directly into InfraWorks. OK. Now, I do want to show one, well, you can drag it into InfraWorks and it will geolocate itself where it needs to be. Um, one thing I do want to make clear, um, it's best if you have Navisworks Manage installed on your machine and that you have this setting under application options set to this data import that you have that check mark on. All right. Your best results will come from this. 
Um, if you don't, it will try and push it out to the cloud and the results may vary a little bit. But uh, I, like I said, I just went through this last week and I had great, great results from using that process. If you have questions about that, coordinating those models, um, I am going to actually record that that class from last week. I'm going to record it in a video and I'm going to post it to our ADSK infrastructure YouTube channel and you'll be able to get it from there. I'm sure Annie would help me uh, coordinate that and get that posted out. I'll try and get that done um, by middle of next week so that everybody can have that. Or you know what? You're more than welcome to email me at john.sayer at autodesk.com. Pretty simple email address. And I'll help you any way I can if you're trying to coordinate those models. But that is that is the best way that I've found to coordinate those. And actually, so the next step of that, the second part of that question was, how do you get that into ArcGIS Online? And so this is just a testament to the, the strong collaboration between Autodesk and Esri that's happening right now. ArcGIS Pro can actually read that survey point and bring in that Revit model in the right location based off of its coordinate system as well. Again, once it's in ArcGIS Pro, then you can publish that Revit model to ArcGIS Online and distribute that out to the rest of your organization. John, so. what's the John? What would you recommend as the best portal or best area to to get familiar with and learn InfraWorks for those people who who are seeing it, see a value in it, and uh, want to be able to to really kind of dive into it or, or get their hands into it, um, wh which one do you recommend the most? Because I know on Autodesk, you know, on Autodesk site, there, there is the, the tab for InfraWorks. You'll have some information there, but as far as just getting through that and kind of getting familiar with it, um, what do you recommend? Well, I, I think the community site is a good place to go. Um, I know we're going to be changing the community site a little bit. I'm not sure what all that's entailed, but I know that there is a wealth of information on that community site. All of these webcasts, are, are stored on that site that we do. Um, I know that there's there's additional stuff that users have put out there. Um, sometimes little tips and tricks, um, all the way down to beginning uh, beginning type classes or or videos that they've posted on there. So I I would check out the community site first. Um, Infraworks is a is a program that is very actually. Pretty straightforward on on how you use it. I've uh, I've seen people jump in and and not say a word to them how to build things, and they've they've plinked around for 10, 15 minutes and been able to generate, you know, some great stuff and never touched it before. So I would encourage you just to get in the software. Um, if you have you know your own GIS data, it may not necessarily be in um, ArcGIS Online yet, um, but you could bring that information in. Then you could post your stuff to ArcGIS Online run through using the connector, uh, definitely get in and, and how you would start would be with model builder. There's just, you know, I could talk all day long on it and I'd love to start you out right now, but uh, I think we're getting close on time. But I would check we're, out the community site. Yeah, we're, we're there on time. And again, to those who, um, who, who have participated, thank you guys very much. Uh, excellent questions all the way around. Um, kind of got overwhelmed there at the end and weren't able to get to all of them. A lot of really great questions. But uh, again, thank you guys to those who, who submitted. We will also um, try and follow up again. We'll, we'll have we we've recorded all these all the questions that were submitted, um, as well as as the user who was submitting uh, submitting them, so we can follow up in in a lot of those regards. And so. Um, We'll do that. Um, John, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go back to, uh, I'll, I'll just display the last couple of things. Um, one, one final question regarding the, um, the Autodesk Civil Community site. So let me get to that right, right here. So the, again, the site that John was referring to is the Civil Community site. And this is where you're going to find the webinars, tips and tricks. A lot of this information is, is all going to be found here. Um, we, we're going to post this webinar on that site as well. In addition, um, take a look at YouTube. For those of you who have questions about getting into InfraWorks, we have a lot of really knowledgeable staff with Autodesk who have pre uh, prepared, John included, who have prepared a lot of really great information uh, and that have posted a lot of this information on YouTube. So if you get a chance, that's a there's a tremendous wealth of information about how to use and how to get into some of these uh, tricks and, and tools and tips for, for utilizing InfoWorks um, on YouTube itself. So, and Ben, last, hey Ben, Ben, that website or that uh, site on YouTube is ADSK. If you search ADSK 
uh, space infrastructure, it will bring that page up. And there, it's like Ben said, there's a wealth of information. ADSK infrastructure. Space. Space infrastructure. infrastructure. Okay. Yep. Um, again, next next month we're going to be diving into what's new in Civil 3D and with InfraWorks as well. So a lot of the InfraWorks information pertains to some of this ArcGIS, uh, but this is really kind of a, a special topic that I know is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Again, thank you to everybody who participated. Uh, thanks for your for your questions. Thanks for a, attending, and we can reach out um, to those to those who have submitted questions. John, Raphael, thank you guys very much. Thanks to everybody who helped with questions um, and those who helped put, put this together. Guys, have a great day and we will hopefully see you next month. Thanks everyone. Thanks.